with chicken bacons. Just a real quick disclaimer, this is a re-upload of the Pacific Rim review that I did. I had to delete the first one because Universal Studios claimed it, even though I had made it under fair use. And I will be I will be damned if I let them make money off of off of the work that I put into that. So this is a re-upload. I just want to explain why it's a re-upload. And uh, I hope you guys have a great day and yeah, I guess uh, enjoy the review. What's shaking bacons? I just got back from watching Pacific Rim Uprising and it was a thing. I am going to try and make this quicker than normal today. My husband ended up assessing the film as a film that didn't need to be made. And technically it didn't need to be made. But was it fun? Sure. In terms of spoilers and non-spoiler discussion, this review I think I'm going to keep a non-spoiler, except at the very end when I discuss the end of the film, and don't you worry, per usual, I will give you a disclaimer ahead of time so you can quickly turn off the video. Pacific Rim Uprising was directed by Steven DeKnight, although Guillermo del Toro of course had hand in the production part of things. The story in a nutshell of Pacific Rim Uprising is that the son of Pentecost, who was Idris Elba's character as the hero in the first movie, has to step up to the plate and and help save the world from yet another attack by the kaiju from the precursors where the threat from the precursors is also being carried out by a human element. If you don't expect much you will not be disappointed. It's a fun action film, it features giant robots, it features giant monsters. I mean if you walk into this film you're not going to be expecting a stellar story and you're not going to be expecting the best acting and if that's what you walk into the film not expecting, you'll be satisfied. It's a fun movie. It feels more like a summer movie than it does a release for near the end of March, but that may just be me. It definitely feels as though it is multiple different story threads that don't perfectly tie in together. Since this film has four different writers that are credited, you can definitely tell that there's not as smooth of a cohesion as one would hope for. The film itself is very, very graphic novelly. It's both vibrant and gritty at the same time, which is particularly enjoyable to view, and it's very aesthetically pleasing. There's lots of fun action sequences. Because the visuals were so spot on, they helped to distract from the flaws in the storyline. In that case, it not only reminded me of a graphic novel, it also reminded me of a video game, because a lot of video games these days focus more on the graphics than on the storyline. That's not exactly the, uh, the best thing that one could hope for in a film, but again, it's still enjoyable. And I love films that have more of an international stage versus just focusing on one major city. That's something that this film does very well. I particularly enjoy in science fiction when all the countries and the world are finally cooperating with one another and working together toward a common goal. And I think this is something that Pacific Rim does particularly well. I did feel watching the film that I needed a counter on the side for how many buildings were needlessly destroyed and how many times the characters were told to shut up. That would have been fun and I sincerely hope that somebody does make a counter of that at some point after the film was released because I think it would be hilarious to see the final tally. Which leads me to ask, why haven't the people of this world started building underground yet? The acting was decent in this movie. John Boyega was great. He delivered some very inspiring lines. He gave a very convincing performance. I enjoyed him and his role. It was nice to see him given an opportunity to really show off his talents versus The Last Jedi which I felt sort of wasted his talent and wasted his character. Scott Eastwood's performance was fine if a little wooden I think that may have been due to the fact that he played a very, very common character archetype. It's kind of hard to put a twist on that. I think he did a pretty good job, all things considered. I always enjoy Byrne Gorman's talent. I love his reappearance as Dr. Herman. He did a fantastic job. I've enjoyed him and everything I've seen him in. I think he's a fantastic actor. Unfortunately, in terms of Charlie Day's performance as his return as Dr. Newt, I don't think he was as convincing in his role in this movie. I felt that he fell a little short, which is disappointing because I do enjoy Charlie Day as an actor. The acting did fall short with a lot of the other characters, and one of the main characters, which is a young girl named Amara that is introduced who is played by Kaylee Spaney. She was enthusiastic in her delivery of the character. However, enthusiasm does not make up for talent, and her performance just was not great, unfortunately, and I don't like saying that, but she really wasn't convincing, and because she wasn't convincing, 
I wasn't convinced that I should care about the character at all. The story does have a lot of inconsistencies, unfortunately, and it doesn't tie in well to the first film, at least not in my opinion. There are major events that happen that take up a large chunk of the film, that at the end of the film you're left wondering why they were never discussed again, why they were never tied in again, where it came from, why this was necessary. One of the characters I feel was dealt a disservice and it just didn't make a lot of sense and this ties into the fact that I think that there were four writers working on this. You can definitely tell where a lot of the storylines kind of crossed paths and never encountered one another and that acted to the detriment of the overall plot. With that came a very predictable film as well. I was able to guess just about every single thing that happened except for who was actually behind the nefarious kaiju attacks again. Entertaining in terms of the movie. Did I want to reach for my phone? I kind of did. There was a couple points in the movie where I just kind of leaned back in the chair and shut my eyes. I wish I could reach for my phone right now, but that would be really rude because I'm in a movie theater. It was fairly entertaining, but I really wanted to grab my phone, and for me that means it gets marked down a lot. I also thought that the beginning and the ending were both kind of lackluster. However, what is hinted at the end makes me hopeful and look forward to the potential promise of Pacific Rim as a series. My final rating for Pacific Rim 2 Uprising is 57%. So I'm going to talk about some quick spoilers related to inconsistencies in the stories. Here is your moment. If you don't want to be spooled, you bit scooch. Please scooch. Go on, scooch. Quick spoilers, story inconsistencies. The entire almost first half of the film was centered around this enemy Jaeger that came and attacked them and John Boyega's sister was killed. You never really get that tie back in, like who was Obsidian as a Jaeger? Why did the sister have to die? She sent coordinates to this abandoned base. So they go to the base, they manage to kill the enemy Jaeger. When it attacks them, they find out it's being operated by a blend of kaiju biology that's been genetically altered by humans, but they never tie the base back in. You never figure out why she sent the base information to them in the first place. Her death was kind of for nothing because they don't touch back on that or explain it at all in any other part of the movie. And it really felt as though it did a disservice to that character. She was such a major role in the first film. It kind of felt like they just brushed her off. The ending was also pretty lackluster. It was just very rushed. And I think that if they had spent less time on the Obsidian Jaeger, and the sister's death, while it was emotional and poignant, it didn't make a lot of sense and it took away from events later on toward the end that could have been better expounded upon. However, I am excited by the hint at the end that there's going to be a third movie where the humans take the fight to the precursors. I really like when we have a premise where the humans go on the offensive. They're hinting that in the next film, we are actually going to take the lead and we're going to go against the precursors and we're just going to deal with the threat once and for all. At least that's the implication. And I really like that idea because I think it would be different than the norm of humans being on the defense and humans reacting just a little bit too late to an extraterrestrial event or attack upon the Earth. So I do like the idea that they are leading into something further especially if they bring back John Boyega's character and they have some further development there. With the way that the beginning was set up, with very few tie-ins to the first movie and just a long voiceover from John Boyega explaining what was going on, it just felt like lazy writing to me and I don't like to see just expanded exposition like that. That's just lazy in my opinion. They should have expanded upon it, built on it, actually worked together as a unit and a team if that was that many writers working on this and really made a cohesive storyline without needing to rely on a voiceover in order to catch the audience up on what happened and explain who 